Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers Ravel's 1977 Pontiac Firebird, featured in the Smokey and the Bandit series movie. It's a 125 scale kit, number 85-4027, and this vintage kit is still available on the open market. It's a skill level 2, which includes 89 parts, molded in white plastic, with black vinyl tires, clear plastic windows, and light covers, and a great looking decal sheet. In this kit you'll find a correctly rendered version of the Blackbird Firebird decal on the hood. Here are the contents of the kit, and as you can see, uh, the tires are bagged separately to keep them from encroaching on any of the plastic, and the decals are in uh, beautiful shape, and they very colorful and the registry is good, but you'll also notice there's some thin spindly lines there that you'll have to apply. So I strongly suggest that you get some of the um, you know setting solutions available on the aftermarket to help place and uh, make these conform to the contours. We'll be using Model Masters liquid cement, sometimes super glue for strength, and white or clear glue uh, for the windows and glass applications. I'll deviate from the instructions and start working on the body. I find it's easier to get the uh, kit into paint uh, for the body and then let that dry before I move on to the subcomponents. So the first thing to do is uh, even though they're very slight, you'll want to take some fine sandpaper and remove any of the molding lines that you find. Uh, you'll see them here designated by the red arrows, but they're basically in the normal places on the front and rear fender clips. To prepare for um, body paint, I remove the um, the left and right side view mirrors from the sprue uh, and inverted them and, and glued them back to the sprue so that I could paint them uh, without having to retouch them. And then uh, the attachment points there are simply the parts that will be glued to the body. So locate the uh, side vents from the kit. Uh, those are those two uh, stirrup looking items and then uh, detach them from the sprue and clean them up nicely uh, and so they have a good contoured shape and uh, then glue those into the uh, proper locations on the body. Uh, they are body color so we're going to put those in place before we paint. We'll do something similar with the door handles although these pieces are chromed so um, you're going to want to uh, sand or scrape the chrome off of them and you can also put them in some uh, household bleach to remove the chrome from most of it and then glue them into place on the body uh, as they are also body color. Once those pieces are in place, go ahead and spray the body inside and out uh, and the hood and related body colored pieces with uh, some flat black primer and follow that up with uh, a gloss black paint. Uh, you know, a light mist at first and then uh, successively heavier until you get a nice glossy coat. Now we can turn our attention to uh, building the engine and uh, this is a nice rendition of the Pontiac 400 cubic inch V8. It's very well detailed and uh, the engine and transmission of course made up of two halves and uh, it's designed to hide the seams so that they're not so apparent uh, but you'll still have some so you may want to uh, finish those up if you're doing a contest model with some putty and sand them smooth where the, the edges meet. Now the oil pan, the starter assembly, they, it covers the bottom seam along with a separate transmission fluid pad pan there so it's not too bad. The top seam is covered with the intake and head assembly so there's two belt assemblies and um, go ahead and assemble the block halves, uh, heads, etc. and then uh, paint the accessory parts the appropriate colors you see here uh, black for the starter, silver on the fuel pump and the fan belt assembly. Um, the alternator is a steel color. Now attach the uh, uh, the AC pump and the belt assemblies and power steering pump to the engine block uh, with the uh, fan spindle as mounting tab there and it's pretty solid design so the valve covers, exhaust manifolds and the uh, HEI distributor are all separate pieces that can be added now. I had used uh, some Krylon Pacific Blue for the engine paint there 
uh, just so you know for your information uh, it's pretty close to the Pontiac blue and then uh, after that's all uh, assembled as you can see uh, that was attached to the uh, frame uh, and there's some very positive mounting points there but remember to scrape off any paint or chrome plating uh, whenever you glue parts together for a good bond so we can work on the interior and uh, if you'll notice here uh, there's some great detail on the dash uh, even on the side panels here uh, and uh, most of this of course is a, is kind of a semi-gloss of satin black and um, you go ahead and uh, spray paint those and assemble the interior along with the seats and uh, as you can see uh, there's um, separate front seats uh, front wheel wells a separate firewall uh, a CB radio uh, and a dashboard with gauge decals and a separate gauge bezel so uh, we're going to get some pretty nice looking interior uh, features on this kit. Some more of that detailing can be seen here uh, the side arm rests have uh, ashtrays, small ashtrays in them uh, along with the seat belt detailing and the pleated panels uh, that can be detailed for extra authenticity. To finish the interior I painted the uh, platform tub uh, of the interior with some satin black and then I taped off the back seat and the center console and flocked the floor uh, with some of that uh, craft flocking that you can get from a craft store or online and the front seats were painted satin black and glued into place and the front wheel wells and firewall uh, were painted flat black as well and detailed with some different colors uh, for the wiring etc uh, of just any of the bottle paints you have on hand so there's some more chromed pieces here that um, uh, I felt needed to be dechromed. So I put those in the bleach bath and then painted them with some metalizer paints um, um, to give them a more authentic look. I also included the gauge bezel uh, in the bleach bath. And after dechroming that, um, I painted it with some of the gold tint uh, color in order to replicate the, um, the Blackbird. Uh, motif. So, uh, also there's some uh, small studs on the back side of this that um, uh, need to be sanded down so there's no fit issue against the uh, dashboard. So the dashboard was painted satin black to match the interior and then detailed with some uh, silver paint and the steering wheel it gets gold spokes and a Firebird decal for the center of it. So install the um, you know the gauge decals behind there and then go ahead and apply the uh, a bezel for the instrument cluster and install the steering column into place. So install the dashboard into the slots provided on the side walls there and once it's done um, this thing looks really terrific uh, including the ashtrays and seat belts from a bygone era. Uh, the only thing was that the CB radio didn't have a uh, microphone so and a couple of small bits of wire and uh, some spare plastic and you'd be able to fix that up too. Now we can work on the chassis and uh, it's a one piece unit uh, uh, but you can detail it. Uh, first you could remove the script, the copyright script that you see there uh, with the red arrows indicating that uh, location. And then uh, spray the uh, unit flat black and you can detail some of the uh, structural cross members etc uh, with some semi gloss paint uh, in order to give it a little definition and there's some um, wiring and uh, things that could be highlighted with a silver pen as well. So now we can grab those uh, snowflake wheels out of the kit and uh, they are the correct units for this model uh, for the TA model so I use some uh, gold paint to uh, detail the interior of them and then I used a black uh, marking pen uh, around uh, uh, the outsides of the spokes and the outer rim of the tire because there's no bead. So um, instead of looking at a piece of chrome on that edge, we're going to uh, blacken that out uh, so that they, um, they look more correct. Now the exhaust tips can be applied and uh, just scrape the uh, plating off from the inner leaved uh, tabs there and paint and uh, so you get a good bond but glue that together and put those into place. I painted the uh, front suspension which is one piece uh, and very strong because of that uh, a satin black color to contrast with the flat black chassis and then the front wheels of course were, were uh, mounted to the suspension with some metal pins that can uh, only be set in the stock position so uh, putting it in the lowered position there will cause uh, interference with the Trans Am kit so don't do that. 
So install the shocks in the rear end there uh, and uh, get those ready for to be received on the rest of the suspension piece. And that was painted a flat black. Um, so then uh, install that into place. Just scrape off any paint uh, and make sure you get a good glue joint there. So assemble those uh, tires and wheels and um, press those into place on the uh, axle spindles uh, in the front and rear. And then we can install the exhaust. Um, those uh, pipes are painted uh, steel colored and of course the uh, aluminum uh, muffler and uh, you can add a gold tint to the catalytic converter. Assemble that four piece unit. They're all positive locating points so you can put that into place now too. So with the chassis finished now we can uh, mount the uh, interior tub uh, and then uh, any of the uh, remaining pieces that go onto the chassis and uh, get that ready for final assembly. So now it's time to get the window glass out of the kit and uh, it's designed so that you don't need glue to attach it to the body. The headliner there is the attachment point uh, and what we need to do first though is tape off the glass portion and then uh, paint that the headliner flat black and the rear view mirror is also attached and uh, in a fitted slot there uh, with the red arrow you can see it uh, so that no glue gets on the windshield which has been a uh, bane from uh, for modelers for a long time. So with the window glass installed now we can uh, grab the rear tail light panel and it um, the instructions call it out to be uh, red but it's actually clear so I uh, painted it uh, I painted it the back of it uh, of the panel with some Krylon red and then detailed the backup lights with some white acrylic paint on the front side and painted the raised ribs with a uh, black marker the um, front marker lights are indicated here with the red arrows on the instructions but they're not part of the grill so you'll just have to use your imagination for those pieces. Um, otherwise use some gold tinted paint to uh, uh, trim the uh, grill uh, nacelles out with um, and then install the uh, headlights there with some clear glue and then uh, place that into position in the uh, front fascia. Now you can go ahead and glue the uh, front fascia on to the, uh, the vehicle's front end there and uh, we're ready to start adding decals to the kit. First we have to add the, uh, the body to the lower portion of the chassis. So spread the sides out and start at the rear and then uh, drop that on very carefully, wiggle it into position. It should actually stay there without any glue but um, look for some contact points if you think uh, uh, you'd like to secure that into place and then to go ahead and install the body. And then the decals, um, just like any other model except for some of those uh, thin stripes, uh, go together very well uh, into place at this time. Uh, but you uh, will benefit from the use of a lot of warm water and uh, carefully uh, uh, placing those into position with some of the decal setting solution I mentioned. That will really help, um, especially with that big uh, uh, black uh, bird uh, decal on the hood. After the decals have dried, that's when I like to place the mirrors into position. Uh, because they're so fragile, uh, you want to handle the model as little as possible to avoid knocking those off. So uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and put the mirrors into place. Well, there you have it. If you're looking to go eastbound and down, this kit will take you on a trip down memory lane. And by and large, everything fit very well. There's very little uh, in the way of uh, inconsistencies. Uh, the decals are excellent, but they uh, take some patience. Uh, once again, the, the uh, detailing for the interior and the separate parts, the engine bay uh, panels that made it easy to work with. So this is a great base for a contest model. Uh, and uh, with that black finish uh, and the gold decals on it, she looks great. Now, if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and also at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.